Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Senior Editor Tom Wright and I'm delighted to be joined by Paul from Vbrick. How's it going, Paul? It's going well. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great, thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be talking about um, video in the enterprise space today and it's quite an interesting market. And I'd like to get, you know, to start with getting your kind of opinions on this market and why it maybe hasn't taken off in the, the way some people thought it may have. Yeah, it's a it's a really unusual market in that way. Uh, it, it it seems obvious that you know we've been used to YouTube and Netflix and everything and Amazon Video for for so long. You'd think there would be a corporate analog of that would have been out there ten fifteen years ago, but it's really just not the case. Uh, and and I think there are mul multiple factors, but uh, pr probably the single largest factor is just you know the strain that video of any quality puts on a corporate network and and this single. Uh, impediment has uh, just sort of dissuaded enterprises for years to to move in this direction, but but you know we see that changing, and uh, uh, we think it's going to be a, a big trend once once the dam breaks, so to speak. Yeah, and so at Vbrick, you are laser focused on fixing some of the challenges that businesses have in this market. Could you talk through kind of how you're fitting into the market and what you're helping businesses achieve? Yeah, what we've we focused on, and we're you know we we are are a bit large enterprise specialists, but what we really try to do is, uh, I mean, I do kind of like the idea. Uh, it's a good analogy to use the enterprise YouTube to sort of get a sense of what is the functionality. Meaning, we've got video on demand, we've got live video, um, that sort of thing. But then anything you do over the live enterprise gets, of course, necessarily complex. And so, what we focus on is providing, trying to provide that consumer level experience. But doing it within the enterprise context where you have to have, uh, you know, you have to know who every user is. You have to log. Everybody has to be logged in. We have to have specific permissions. We have to have rights for the different video. We have to understand um, where that video is being distributed and which parts of which corporate network have access to it. Who's authorized to do live streams? What kind of processes do we have to embed um, that video in. So there becomes this, there's a, you know, a plethora of additional things you have to do, not to mention security, encryption, and value add. You have to translate and, you know, uh, transcode, um, and enhance video. So it's, the, the, it, it becomes a very, uh, tricky thing to do. And, you know, the leading customers that we, uh, use are large, large financial institutions, manufacturing companies, pharmaceutical companies. Um, media companies even internally, which is kind of odd. You'd say, oh, this company who would be a Vbrick customer, um, uh, you know, is a well-known household global multi-billion dollar name that has its own streaming portal, yet um, internally they use Vbrick. So it's kind of fascinating. Yeah, and there's certainly a lot for large enterprises to think about when they're looking at their video solutions. And there's a lot that you're doing actually to help them with the challenges that you just talked about. So could you go through some of the, the real key features of your platform? Yeah, I think one of the first things that that is key is that um, we come both with a streaming and video on demand service. So we can help make sure that, again, you get that sort of portal experience and you can use it from any type of device, mobile or otherwise. But but, but another key part of our technology is what uh, a piece we call it VBIT. Vbrick distribution, but it, what it, it is a it's a, a bundle of uh, different technology modalities that we allow customers to use. With the idea that um, if you're going to use video with any degree of quality, it has to be able to flow at scale, however you need it to. And you know, so we use a, a number of technologies, including uh, peer meshing, uh, multicast, um, and what we what's also known as edge caching to actually. Um, harmonize the cloud, which is how we deploy uh, in general, with what happens once you touch a private network and you're now dealing with security, um, uh, encryption, uh, VPNs, all sorts of different things. And there is no one size fits all about how uh, uh, any given company's network, private networks work, not to mention you know, most companies that are large are aggregations of different geographical locations. They're, they're, uh, sometimes companies are acquired. So you have different, uh, you know, even the sub networks of a private network are very different. So you have to be able to handle all of those scenarios. And, and, and I think we're the only vendor that really, you know, comes out there and says, we don't care. Um, you, you, we're going to make sure the video works everywhere. And we're going to apply whatever technology uh, is needed to to keep um, the video flowing. 
And I think that's, that's a big prerequisite to, to unlocking all the functional value of video in the enterprise. Yeah, and if we take a step back from video for a second, I guess it's important for this video technology to fit in with the other technology that enterprises are using. So could you talk a little bit about how you enable VBrick to become part of this kind of wider technology infrastructure? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, we've, we have this vision that, that, the, um, that we need a unified um, access and ability to move the video around, to store it, categorize it, and add value. And one of the big parts of that is, is that there's no one sort of, way you you're going to receive video and by way i mean it's not like a single portal yes we can provide a portal we have a portal it's great but you also want video embedded directly into processes so if you have a customer support process and you need a certain piece of, of content or you need to have access to immediate ability to live stream to a, a select audience or anything you don't want you don't want to have to go somewhere else or go to another app to deal with it, you want it completely embedded. So one of the key things that we do is that we really offer an enterprise video platform as a service development platform. So as part of it, our whole application is built with very rich APIs and an SDKs so that you can say, hey, I, I want to embed this in this part of a company portal, or I wish to put this inside a customer support function or inside a sales function, uh, or, or I want to even build uh, perhaps a customer facing application that does a specific thing. So we're not trying to replicate all the business processes around how video can be used. We want to focus on the hard problem of making sure all the videos in one place that all the services that you need for video, um, uh, transcription, facial recognition, image recognition, um, distribution are all there and accessible by any application or 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 mode so that an enterprise can say hey we don't have to worry about where the video is it's all here we can put it inside our workday we can put it inside our slack we can put it it works with our all our video conferencing programs we're going to get video access and scalability and quality everywhere so that that's absolutely you know the key for us is not trying to figure out how to be the best video marketing analytics company or boil every use case that's that's chasing you know uh something that's huge we just we want to focus on how do we make the hard problem go away with video for for business okay i've just got a couple more questions for you paul sure. the first is about the um the go-to-market and you've got some really interesting go-to-market routes actually so could you talk through the different ways in which you get to the customer yeah i think there's really three you know primary you know, three, maybe three and a half primary ways we do that. I mean, one, we do direct selling to the enterprise. So uh, clearly there are a lot of large enterprises um, uh, out there. Uh, we have a pretty good customer list that uh, anybody can look at um, and uh, where, where we will sell directly and they've already determined a need and, and we go support that. Um, the other uh, way we, in, because of the way that video gets tied in also with a lot of infrastructure uh, plays, we have a lot of a pretty good channel ecosystem, um, you know, with companies like WebEx and Amazon Web Services, uh, as well as a lot of the major integrators like uh, Lumen and uh, WWT, companies like that. Um, and, and then last, you know, we have a really great um, technology partnerships where we're embedded actually is an OEM technology to get large um, uh, uh, streaming available, even though it might not be under our brand. So we have OEM presence with other providers that need video to scale. Uh, at, you know, Notably, uh, WebEx is one of those uh, providers for their webinar product when uh, they go over a certain amount of audience. Um, it's 3,000 really what's delivering those webcasts is, is VBRIC under the covers and, uh, and and that's a good entry point. And one of the coolest things is, is that we can actually harmonize that with other uses of VBRIC. So no matter how VBRIC and, and video touches, you know, a specific class customer or, or client, we can pull them together into a, again, into this unified experience. So, and, and lastly, we're, we are now really opening up uh, to the developers. We're allowing developers to get access to our, our platform uh, and start small. Uh, I really think the I'm a big believer in the shift of um, companies are 
technology and product directed. They want as much info and access to the product as they can get um, at small scale, even if it's a large scale technology like Vbrick is. So we are uh, we're, we're trying to enable that and and make sure that you know the, the developers that need to integrate and develop have access to our technology. Okay, well, it sounds like there's certainly a lot going on. So my final question for you, Paul, can you give us any kind of clues into what we can expect to see from you over the coming months? Yeah, I think uh, the, 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 the first thing that I think you uh, will really begin to see is I think you'll see more um, of our technology embedded into other platforms. I think um, there are so many uses of video that providers need to, to build their own capabilities, their own products, but they want video inside it. And, and I think you will, you know, we'll, we'll be seeing a lot more of these um, embedded situations. I think we'll also begin to see um, uh, some applications that use um, uh, video in a very limited way, but do it natively, um, you know, moving away to say, we just need a really industrial strength backbone. So I think that's something that you're, we're also going to see. And I think the last trend that um, we're focused on that it surprises a lot of people, but it's it's important is um, there's a real um, uh, security risk with a lot of video. Uh, every meeting, a lot of companies record meetings like these. They automatically record. They do a Microsoft Teams. It gets recorded. They do a Google Meet. It gets recorded. Um, and sometimes there's no transcription, no translation. We have no idea what IP is trapped in that content, we have no idea if there's both risk and value. In fact, that's the, the case, right? Both risk and value are trapped in the video. Um, and it's sort of a large unknown and it becomes sort of a scary question. So I think um, some solutions really targeting how, uh, you know, particularly with the large enterprise, how uh, we plan to both mitigate the risk and increase the value. And I think once uh, people realize that, in fact, this isn't a scary thing and the video is doable. Um, we are extremely well positioned um, in the marketplace. OK, well, that sounds very exciting. And we'll certainly be keeping an eye out for any news coming out of VBrick. But in the meantime, it's been great to have you. Oh, thanks so much. It's all, always great to talk about this stuff and uh, kind of live for that. So I uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, everyone, for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like and a share on social media, and we'll see you next time.